Hello everyone, George here. In this video, we're going to extend our application that we've been working on, where we had a bouncing ball moving from one side of the screen to the other. And for this, we're going to include sound. Specifically, we're going to be working with the sound pool class. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to want our game objects, such as our bouncing ball, to have access to the sound class. The idea is that the sound class is going to host all the different audio files that we have available, and then from all of our game objects, we can ask the sound class to, of course, play those audio files for us. So we're going to create a new class. Let's go over here and right-click on our project, New Java Class. Let's call this Sound Manager. So within Sound Manager, we're going to need to do several different things. Uh, we need a constructor, obviously. So let's go Alt, Insert, and create a constructor for it. I want everyone to have access to the Sound Manager. And whenever you want everyone to access something, it's always a good idea to create some variation of a singleton or at least a static element where through the class itself, we can access what's going on. So let's create a public static sound manager and just call that get instance. We're going to be populating this through our custom view before any of the game objects actually have access to it. So it's okay for us to do this. So long as you understand the order of operation and when things get initialized, it's not a problem to use these sort of static methods because anyone using it, that is the game objects themselves, won't be able to access it until after everything has been initialized. Now we also need sound effects in our layout here. And let's do the easiest way possible. We could do this through asset folders if we wanted to, which is something we haven't discussed, but something we'll get to later. Later. For right now, let's just use res uh, new and directory and do a raw directory. The raw directory is going to hold information, anything that we want basically to put in there. And we can access it fairly simply and easily. Now I've already taken the time to create a sound effect. Let's look at that right now. That was annoying. Anyway, I've created this sound, and this is the sound that's going to play whenever our ball hits one of the sides of the area. So let's right click, copy, go back to Android Studio, and right click and paste this in. Okay, that all looks good, and there we go. So now we have our MP3 file within the raw file. Perfect. So now let's actually create a few different elements for us to work with. We're going to be working with the sound pool class. The sound pool is meant for sounds that are going to play very quickly, very shortly, and ultimately are not very long. So let's do a protected sound pool. Whoops. Pool sound pool. And let's also uh, alt enter, bring that in. And next up we're going to I want to have all the sounds accessible to all the different objects in our game. So the idea is that any of these sounds that have been loaded can be used. So let's create a public static int sound underscore boop because that's the sound I make. And the last thing we're going to do is just store the context when we get it. Uh, we don't need it, but we're going to store it anyway just in case we have some use for it in the future. So within our sound manager, we're going to need our context. It's, it's the one time we actually need this to load things in. So let's go ahead and in our constructor, make sure we load the context in. Now the sound pool has undergone, well, some changes in terms of how you use it since, uh, let's, I believe it's Lollipop. So we need to do a little bit of version checking to make sure we're not working with uh, the wrong thing here. So let's do an if statement, and this will make sense in just a second, just bear with me. But to do version checking, we're gonna do build.version.sdk int. We wanna make sure that that's greater than the build dot version codes dot lollipop. If we're above that version number, we're going to actually utilize the sound pools builder class, which is something it seems like Android is moving more and more towards using these builders to generate objects. So let's go ahead and do sound pool is going to be equal to a new sound pool dot builder. No, 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 not quite yet. Dot builder. There we are. Dot. And now, of course, we can chain methods one after the other to set up how this thing should be created. And then we'll call at the end the builder, or excuse me, the build function to create that instance. So for now, all we want to do is set the maximum number of sounds that can play at a time. 
I'm gonna set this to 20. I doubt we're gonna have that many playing, but the idea is that's how many separate streams can actually occur. The last thing we need to do is call the dot build command, which is gonna to return to us our sound pool object. So you notice we get an error. Call requires API 21, our minimum is 17, blah, 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 blah. Let's take care of that nonsense right now. Else, let's do a sound pool is equal to a new sound pool. And this is the older constructor for creating sound pools. Uh, if we hit Control and P, we get our first number of maximum streams. And second, we want the stream type. That's in the audio manager dot. And of course, we're going to be working with music. And the last thing we need is uh, the quality. This is not currently used, so we just set it to be one by default. Semicolon, and we're done. There was also a space between the uh, this symbol and the equals, so that solved that problem right there. Now we need to introduce a method that other classes or other objects are going to be able to call at any time once they acquire an instance of the sound manager to play whatever they want. So let's create a public void play sound and we're going to pass into that an integer value. When we load sounds, which we haven't done yet in our contact, in our constructor, uh, they get an integer value indicating which one it is. That's how we differentiate from one sound to another, is the integer value that we get returned. So we're going to pass in that integer value here. So let's do sound pool dot play, and we get a lot of parameters. And if you want to, you can add all these parameters to this method, we're going to play whatever sound the person passed in. I'm going to do a full volume on the left channel, full volume on the right channel. Priority is also going to be one. We're not going to loop anything. And our rate is going to be one as well, meaning that's how fast it's played. You can adjust the rate if you want to sound it lower or higher. It's up to you. And feel free to add those to your parameters inside of your play sound method. I'm just going to keep it simple for now. Now we need to add those or load those sounds in. So we already have the sound boop up here as a static integer, but it doesn't have a real value yet. That value is only going to be assigned when we decide to load that sound in through the sound pool. So what we're going to do now is sound underscore boop is going to be equal to sound pool dot load. And here's where we need that context because of the way I chose to do this because it's through the raw folder instead of the assets folder. So let's do context first. Alt P, now we need the ID of that object. So let's do r.raw.boop. And finally, we need the priority. At this time, priority is not used by Android, so we're going to set it to a one by default. And that's it for our sound manager class. If you have other sounds you want to introduce, create more of these static integer values describing what that sound actually is and make sure you load them when our sound manager is created and you can add as many sounds as you want. So let's go ahead and instantiate our sound manager because right now it's not going to do anything. Jumping over to our custom view, the idea here is for us to instantiate and create this object. So within custom view, we want to make sure we do that. So down here in our constructor, let's do a so let's create a new sound manager. And we want to pass our context into that since we require it. Now since as soon as we create a sound manager over here, it's going to create itself here, as you can see. The only thing we haven't done yet, actually that's very important, is we did not set the sound manager's get instance to ourself. So let's do that. Let's do get instance is equal to this. Now we have a reference to this instance of the sound manager that's accessible to every other game object inside of our game, meaning we have easy access to that object. So coming back over here, as soon as we generate it, we now have a reference to this object that anyone else can use. So let's go ahead and do that. Within our bouncing ball class, there's only two times we want to play a sound when it hits the one, you know, the left side or the right side. So let's use that here. So we're going to do sound manager dot get instance dot 
play sound, and the sound we're going to play is sound manager dot sound boop. We're going to do the same exact thing whenever we hit the other side, which is right here. Let's see if this works. Go ahead and hit run. Let's bring up side sync. All right, so let's create some balls. <laughs> I hope you heard that. That was a lot of booping. So there's one. So the idea here is we created a very simple sound manager that's accessible to all of our game objects so that whenever they hit these different areas, they will access it and play whatever sound they want to. Boop, 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 boop. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next few videos, we're probably going to jump around to some other topics that don't have anything to do with this particular application. And then we might come back. Oh, there's some more boops. And here comes another one. And the final one. Anyway, we'll hit some other topics up soon. Hope to see you then. So long. Goodbye.